history, Adam Mayer. Um, doesn't it bother the leader that, uh, given there were no other similar cases uh, at that point in time, and in the light of the uh, previous court appearance uh, referred to, it would have actually been a relatively simple uh, matter for uh, an investigative journalist to identify the household concerned. Uh, doesn't it bother him that this might even have happened before the letter had been served uh, to uh, the uh, household? And now he's had a bit more time to reflect on this particular episode. Uh, does he agree with me that, in fact, this was an error of judgment uh, on his part? Mr. Mayor, I thank uh, Councillor Thomas for his supplementary. Uh, taking his last point about error of judgment, I have absolutely no doubt that there was no error of judgment. I have no regret about that decision this council made. The clarity, the clarity with which we made the decision. Uh, Councillor Govindia, could I, Councillor Govindia, could I ask you to be quiet for a moment, please? I wish to address the gallery. Members of the public are welcome to attend meetings of the council to observe the proceedings here, but I must make it clear they are not permitted to take part in or to interrupt discussions this evening. There are more important items of business to be considered here tonight, and it is essential that they are discussed and debated by the councillors without interruption from the gallery. I will, not, I will not tolerate interjections or comments from the public gallery, and if it becomes necessary, I will give instructions for the individuals concerned to be excluded from the meeting or for the gallery to be cleared completely. I hope that members of the public will now remain quiet so that we can proceed with the meeting in an orderly fashion. Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just, just to go back on what Councillor Thomas asked, uh, I have no doubt. I have no... Um, I think as far as the release... The, the gentleman in the red and navy striped shirt, if you have any more interruptions from you, I will ask you to leave the gallery. Do you understand? Thank you. Councillor Govindia. Councillor Tom... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Thomas talked about press. What I have read um, in the Daily Mail was a, an extraordinarily willing interview with a willing person it did not show to me that this was a person who had been doorstepped and was reluctant to speak. Uh, maybe my, my take is different from his, but I think my take is right and his is wrong. What was required was the council made a statement that it would, it would invoke the tenancy condition. It got the chance to invoke the con tenancy condition. We did not step aside in terms of our responsibility, we took the action that was required of us and was expected of us. I have also no doubt that the council will step up to that should another occasion occur or another family come to it. And if I may say so, 17,500 council tenants individually sign an agreement with this council expecting this council to respect that agreement and abide by that agreement. And that is exactly what the council did, and for that I have no shame. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Sir Belton. Would the leader take my word for it, given that I think I have met the person concerned rather more than anyone else around here, um, that rather than willing um, and uh, whatever other words he used with... Uh, arrogance, given that I don't think he has met the person concerned, it would be more likely and more accurate to describe the person concerned as naive in things way beyond her depth and perhaps ill-advised. Um, I don't think that that description of Councillor Govindia gave was in any way accurate to the rather alarmed and slightly scared person I know reasonably well now. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Belton is right. Uh, I don't know the lady in question. Uh, he has struck a relationship with her. I'll take his word for it. Councillor Dawson. Question number five to the leader. I thank Councillor Dawson for his question. Um, 
it was actually an incredible phenomenon to see such a large number of people waiting from 8.30 in the morning, waiting to clean up Clapham Junction, despite being told at several occasions by the police they were not required or they were going to have to wait too long. They did not lose their patience. They did not actually go and, and create mayhem for the police. They quietly and purposefully waited till they were allowed to go in. And at the end of it, I think Clapham Junction was cleaner than it ever has been. Uh, but it was the spirit of, of the people. You know, they were laughing and joking, and yet they were commiserating with those who had lost. It's, it's a kind of atmosphere that if you could, you could bottle, you would be a millionaire. Supplemental. Um, thank you very much indeed, Leader, for those sort of comments, and also your reply to um, some earlier questions about how we harness that spirit. In the spirit of that, could we give some publicity to the information that the borough commander gave on Monday night, that as a result of their patience and the ability of the police to treat St. John's Road as a crime scene, that an additional 40 suspects have been arrested. And I think in terms of engaging with people so they understand what some of the jobs are that need to be done, it would be very helpful if we could continue to say not only thank you, but thank you because by having your patients there, the police have been able to effect further arrests of suspects. Um, Councillor Dawson's absolutely right that um, that period of doing methodical and quiet forensic examination of uh, bits of broken glass and, and, and all that sort of stuff has yielded some, some in incredibly important evidence. Um, I don't know about other members in the council, but I occasionally enjoy watching CSI and sometimes wonder whether any of it is actually true. But clearly, in Clapham Junction, it came to its own, and it was very much true. Can I also just, just um, Mr. Mayor, mention that um, Councillor Dawson took me around parts of his ward, and we visited the Pizza Express, where I have to say there was a hero of the hour. Uh, a, a member of Pizza Express staff uh, who was engulfed in the mayhem. There were six or seven ladies dining who were petrified. So was he. Uh, and, and he locked them all in, 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 in the room at the back whilst uh, uh, things around them erupted. Um, he described how hot and how worrying it was. Um, but I... I, I and, following morning he was calm, he was collected, and he was methodically going through his, his place, keeping it clean and, and uh, wanting to open for business in 48 hours. I, I have to say that a man like that was certainly for those ladies the hero of the hour. Councillor Belton. Uh, can I um, inform the leader, uh, perhaps he'd like to visit as well, um, about the activities of the community gardeners um, on the Doddington estate, uh, one of whom, at least one, but perhaps several, were there on the Tuesday morning and took the opportunity of uh, uh, encouraging members of the public to go and join in a community dig-in on uh, the Saturday morning. Um, and indeed they did, and I was there with them, and people who were at the clean-up from Clapham Junction who came from, uh, as I recall, certainly Tower Hamlets and Southwark, um, came all the way back over to the Doddington to join in the dig-in, and perhaps he'd like to see how the communal garden and the communal dig-in is proceeding on the Doddington. Uh, Mr. Bay, yes, I'm happy to take up Councillor Belton's offer of a visit to the Roddy. In fact, I read about it in one of your, your uh, publications. Uh, yes, I mean, there was, there was an enormous amount of coming together, whether it was the heroes of the hour or whether it was uh, the people we now call the Broom Army or whether it was people further away. What I was also found very touching was a reflective piece that the youth worker from the Providence Youth Club uh, wrote and, and circulated amongst uh, some people. And it was a very reflective piece, both about what happened uh, and, and, and kind of feeling of helplessness and yet a feeling of hope at the end of it. Uh, I'd be delighted to go around Doddy and, and I'm sure Councillor Belton and I could fix a time to do that. Actually, I've been twice to those gardens. I can recommend a visit there, Councillor Govindia. 
I didn't, I didn't go, avail myself of those, Councillor Belton. The time for questions is now over.